Employee Models Kit Review Time. Today we've got Tacom's 135th scale. This is the Mark IV Tadpole, obviously because of the shape it is. Now, seen Tacom stuff before, and obviously there's a plethora now of brand new kits that are coming out which are obviously focused on the World War One. Some incredible ones we've looked at reviewed recently, but it's very nice to see all these much overlooked kits for years and years. So anyway, beautiful box art on the front. Talking about workable track link, seems to be pretty much the staple now for all these things, and it's great to see it because track's notoriously difficult. Uh, okay, profiles, no problem there. Very nice, seeing the line drawing one down there. Okay, and over, so your kit number is 2015. Okay, sprue layout on there as well. Uh, we got a little bit of photo etch by the looks of it, just down the end, and round on the back side. So in the box, we actually get, hopefully it'll stand up, it does. Not as stuffed as we've seen recently, uh, but definitely is. So down in here, we've got a bag full of links and all the bits and pieces. So as always, we'll have a look through the, the manual first. Very nice book type manual. And we've also got this one out. A couple of other nice little touches in here as well. So down here we've got a nice little profile for the colour callouts of it. So you've got the usual thing. Callouts in mid colour, a little bit different way of doing it. Uh, but there we go. Okay, a little bit of photo look at the moment. I do love this cover. It's actually like cardboard. In fact, it's obviously some recycled bit, but you can see some very nice stuff down there. So usual thing on about applying all the different bits and pieces. So you've got your parts call out. And then obviously down in here, usual way of doing this, not too much difference, it's just the back end on this one's a little bit different. So starting with obviously the upper turret area, uh, the actual machine going going down in there, and then the whole parts going together, and then adding all the details, as we've seen, pretty much standard for all this type of work. Then the roof details going on there, the exhaust pipes, okay, the rear stowage bin uh, type on, and that little manifold over the back, the actual cover, okay, and then on with the front. I think this is where we've actually got some photo etched parts, which I do believe are these guys down here, for strapping those on, which is a nice touch. Then going in with the back one, so say we've got the fuel tank onto the rear, the rear deflection plate, the rear part of the exhaust, and then working on the traditional sort of tap hole side of it. And this is this extended rear part at the back, which I do believe was to help with uh, breaching trenches, because obviously it's a lot bigger footprint. It could just roll right the way over, so it was less um, uh, prone to sort of ditching and things like that. So anyway, that's those going back on there. You've got the sprockets, got the internal plate to it as it's working its way down and then loads of wheels as we've seen with all of these going down in there literally hundreds of them uh, down in there and then across this makeable track which looks very interesting usual thing couple of pins and it's going to bolt together okay talking about obviously the colors of it same again on the other side so it's just exactly the same and then for the internal so as you say you've got a very nice detailed gun going down in there this is looks like it's a male version uh, looks like it's got machine guns as well, but yeah, I think this is more like the male version, as in as the heavy guns rather than the lighter version, the female. Okay, exactly the same then for the other side, doing the actual the sort of sponsons on the side. Okay, and then coming down here on the back, this is the way it's going to connect in. This is that sort of rear mortar uh, unit on the back. Okay, so it's like a travelling mortar, and then. Okay, just down on the back you have it there. So you say, really straightforward, these two extra parts then and going through. Okay, no internal detail like we've seen with, I think it's still over my shoulder, the big boy back there, the main one, but definitely something to look at. So, okay, just have a look at this guy. You can see this is our photo etch. Pretty straightforward, nothing exciting really down there. Should add a little bit of detail where it's required. And as we've got them here, we've got the actual individual track length, very reminiscent of the Tamiya one, to be honest, the way it's actually gonna go together. So you've got a nice big bag of those. To be honest, it's always been a real bug bit. I hate doing armor, road wheels and tracks. Road wheels, I've got an easy way of painting them now, straightforward using the template, and then obviously click together tracks, make it so much easier. Okay, so in we go, screw one. Okay, all individually bagged, which is lovely to see. So as you go in here, if we just drop this top camera in nice and tight. Okay, and this other one just in a little bit. So there we go, as you can see, very nice. Not the sharpest detail, but it's definitely very nicely detailed all the way through, all this nice raised riveting detail, as you can see down there, or sort of bolting detail, I should think, all in there, very nicely done. Nice, clean, crisp molding, no sign of flash, anything else like that. 
Ejector pins, amazingly, very, very far and few between. We've got no ejector pins on any of these parts. We've got one here in the middle. Okay, catch it in the light, there you go. But if you look, there's nothing on any of the others. And this is something we were saying about with the main one, there was ejector pins on it. This guy has got no ejector pin marks down here whatsoever. Uh, we've got a de-ditching bar, looks like here as well, though I can't see it actually on the vehicle. Uh, but we've got a de-ditching bar there because it hasn't got the frame to chuck it over the top. So I don't know quite on that one. So that's quite nice. Uh, okay. See, it's a bit of a thing because it's showing. This is the bar running right over the top. I wonder if we've got a, a common area here uh, sprue because obviously this is the bar that traditionally would run right the way over the top. Okay, so as you can see it down in here, very nicely done. Again, nice, clean, crisp molding, all of these, no problem with it at all. As you can see, it is very, very nice, all of it. And the details as well, even on the, you know, there's no ejector pins on this, it's really weird. And it's sort of molded both sides as well, because technically you've got like a blank side here uh, and on here, but this is the blank side of the mold. So really weird how they've done it all, but it does look extremely nice, clean, crisp, chunky plastic you know uh, this guy here it's more of a fine of refined bits so again down as you can see we've got the guns looking very nicely detailed and everything else like that some of the hydraulic -y type units for it all going together all the small parts very clean no flash or any nasties on any of these smaller little sprues as you can see down there on the parts here and then over on this side again all the bolting detail very nice very clean very crisp all down there like that and again no ejector pin marks apart from a couple of them got one in the middle each here one there okay but other parts don't have them it's really odd how there's none in there and i know when you look at the sprues themselves you've got lots of uh sort of ejector pins on the actual sprue points themselves to get it out uh, of the actual mold and things but the parts itself extremely nicely and very well done okay have a look this is obviously, you know, we've got these two here. Uh, I don't know if they're a match set E and L, but they are different. So, like the fold. Very close in the bags. Okay. Again, you can see this beautiful detail. You catch it in the light. Absolutely fantastic. Very nicely done. Very clean, crisp, sharp. It's not as sharp as some of the ones we've seen, but it's definitely there. You know, you have got some very nice details on this. I don't know how well the actual camera picks them up, but extremely nice as you look at them. Very nicely done. And then obviously this is the inside, technically is the blind side. Again, no ejector pin marks on this at all. Even on a large part like this, we've got no ejector pin marks in there whatsoever. Beautifully done, very nice. And then we've got the same on this guy. There's not a lot of point getting this one out of the bag, which you can see. Exactly the same, no ejector pin marks at all. Very clean, crisply molded. That's very nice. Okay, moving to the smaller ones. Okay, so in here we've got um, duplicate one. So we've got C. So uh, this is our face side. Technically, this is the face side. So you've got actually the drive sprockets and some of the gearing mechanics, the drive chain, things like that down here. Very nicely molded, very cleanly done. All the suspension, these are the little machine gun uh, on here. You can see the drum mags for them. The little cleats uh, and things, they're very nice, very clean, very crisp, beautifully done, very nice. A nice, sharp, clean kit, I would call this one. Uh, and the next one. Again, a little bit down here. As you can see, this is the mortar unit. So this is like the, the bit down the back here. So you actually got the mortar tube itself. Okay, got an ejector pin in there. So you're gonna have to whip this guy out. Okay, so you're gonna have to actually, these usually, there you go, they pop out. Okay, so you can just flick them out with your nail. They are literally that easy to get out, but you are gonna to have to take those out. First time we've seen them. Got the gun barrels down here, very nice. This X is obviously the, 
spreading it at the back, keeping it all nice and square and everything else. And obviously this is the mortar plate that it actually sits on at the back of the unit. So very nice there. And then not a lot of point getting all these out. This is all your road wheel. So you've actually got three screws of those to go through, all identical. Okay, so you've actually got the pins through the middle, then the wheels themselves are making their way around just like that. And that is it. Didn't see any decals. No markings on this whatsoever, apparently. Okay, fair enough. Um, normally you have markings and decals, no decals. So there we go. Something a little bit different. I haven't seen, or did I ever know, that they actually had a mortar on the back. And I've had this kit sat here probably for over a month. Um, and I never noticed it had a mortar on the back of it. So that's a clever little design on this one. As I say, it's great now that the World War One is really getting a look because for years, all you had is of the small scale stuff, uh, the 172nd and smaller stuff. So it's nice to see the, the companies really have looked at ways of designing and it does seem to be that this track system with linkable tracks uh, that are working as well seem to be Tamiya sort of kicked it off with their World War One. Before that I hadn't actually seen clickable as in no glue required just put them together snap fit almost links it's almost been driven by this world war one I. I know it's a simpler track system to modern tanks and modern armor but now if you look at the meng or mon kits uh, they've actually got all of this uh, workable linkable tracks that go all the way through and it makes modeling so so much easier so there we go that is the mark IV tab pole something a little bit different but if you are into this type of armor this is definitely one for your collection